Thank you for joining me once again on Crunch Econometrics. This tutorial covers the basics of ARMA and ARIMA modeling. So what exactly does this acronym mean? ARMA simply means autoregressive moving average and ARIMA implies autoregressive integrated moving average. It's also popularly known as the Box Jenkins methodology. So what is ARMA or ARIMA modeling? It's a method among several using forecasting variables. It uses the information obtained from the variables itself to forecast its own trend. The variable is regressed on its own past values. It is based on univariate analysis. It requires you knowing and analyzing the probabilistic or stochastic properties of the series. It is designed to forecast future movements. It uses the philosophy of let the variable speak for itself. So is ARMA or ARIMA model useful? ARMA model helps investors, government regulators, policymakers, and relevant stakeholders. It helps them to take informed decisions. For instance, an investor before buying a financial asset will want to know is it really worth buying or holding on to say six to nine months or even a year. Such a person will want to know the future value of such an asset based on the information of the past performance of that particular asset. The same way policymakers and regulators will want to forecast the future trend of, say, some economic series and formulate policies based on the past values or realizations of such series. So, ARIMA or ARMA modeling, let me just make it clear now, is not only peculiar to economic usage, it can be applied to any other field. For instance, people who forecast earthquakes or weather also use ARMA or ARIMA modeling. So this model is applicable to any field, not just in economics. In essence, information relating to the series are obtained from the series itself. So what are the underlying assumptions of ARMA and ARIMA modeling? There are two of them. The first is that the series must be stationary. At this point, you must have understood what uh, is implied by when we say a series must be stationary. That is, such a series must exhibit main reversion, it must have a constant variance and a theoretical correlogram, which diminishes as the long length increases. The second is the invertibility assumption, which is peculiar to the moving average component of the ARMA modeling. It is essential that the series be represented by a finite order moving average. It also uses the autocorrelation function and the partial autocorrelation function for identification purposes, implying that the series can be approximated by an autoregressive model. So these two assumptions must be in place before ARMA modeling can be done. Stationarity and invertibility. If you need to know what they mean in details, please consult Simple Econometrics Textbook for you to get the basic understanding. So how do you specify an ARMA model? Number one, the Box Jensen type series models allow YT, which is now the dependent variable to be explained by its past or lacked values of Y itself and its stochastic error term. For this reason, ARMA models are sometimes called a theoretic models because they are not derived from any economic theory. I mean, you are simply trying to explain the variable using the information contained by the variable itself. The series in this case is simply explaining itself using its own historical data. So it may not be derived from any economic theory. So ARMA is composed of two distinct models which explains the behavior of the series from two different perspectives. The first is the autoregressive model and the second is the moving average model. We will also show you that these models move in opposite directions of one another. So, specifying an ARMA model. On the screen, we can see GDP in our example. Look, looking at equation one is explained by the first lag, as we can see here. And this same equation is what is being expressed beneath. The L here is being taken care of by the T minus one. So L is also the first lag of GDP plus an error term. Or by the time you move L GDP to the left hand side, that is factorize it, you have this equation here. So GDP is being explained by its first lag. This is what equation one is saying. So there is no other exogenous variable in this model.
So looking at the brief notes I have here, like I said before, we don't have any exogenous variables in the model. Equation 1 simply states that GDP in time t is explained by its immediate past in t minus 1 and a white noise error term, which is a ut. Alternatively, it's saying that uh, what will happen to future GDP in time t plus 1 is also largely dependent on the behavior of the series in the present time. Remember one of the key assumptions of Arma modeling is stationarity. So it is assumed that the absolute value of this parameter b is less than 1. If this value is greater than 1, it means that GDP in time t will get to be bigger and bigger in each time period and the series becomes explosive. So it is important that this b, which is the parameter to be estimated, in absolute terms, must be less than 1. So what is the generalized ARP model? The autoregressive model can be generalized to include more lags. So for instance, an AR2 process, whatever figure is in the parenthesis tells you the number of lags included in that particular model. So an AR2 process should simply tell you that the dependent variable is being explained by two lags. As we can see here, t minus 1, t minus 2. Same thing goes for an AR3 process. Simply tells you the dependent variable is being explained by three lags. T minus one, T minus two, T minus three. And an ARP process simply tells you that the dependent variable is explained by P lags. So this is a generalized form. How about specifying a moving average process? Explanation is not too different from an AR process. For you to construct an NA1 process still using GDP as an example, equation five shows that GDP is being explained by the current error and the first lag of the error term. So GDP is explained by the value of the error term and the immediate past error known at time t. So this is how you specify an NA1 process. Generalizing an NAQ process, same explanation, whatever value is in parentheses tells you the number of lags to be included in the model. So NA2 process includes two lags of the error term, t minus one, t minus two. While an MAQ tells you that the dependent variable is explained by Q lags of the error term. So now let's combine AR and MA to give us what is known as ARMA PQ model. So an ARMA PQ model is being constructed when you have the lags of the dependent variable in addition to the lags of the error term. So an ARMA PQ shows you that GDP is a function of P lags of GDP and Q lags of the error term. So this is the way you can construct ARMA models. So having understood the concept of ARMA, understanding ARIMA will be quite easy. The distinction between ARMA and ARIMA is the integration component, which brings us back to the subject of stationarity. We know that most economic variables are non-stationary, hence they have to go through a transformation process which we often call differencing before they can become stationary series. This transformation process is also called integration. So ARIMA informs the researcher or reader that the series in question has gone through a process of integration before it can be used for any analysis. Hence, the moment a non-stationary variable is differenced before becoming stationary, such series is known as an integrated series. So how do you specify ARIMA? ARIMA is specified as PDQ. P tells you the number of lags of the dependent variable. D tells you the number of times the variable has been uh, integrated before becoming stationary. And Q tells you the number of lags for the MA process. So an ARMA 112 simply tells you you have an autoregressive which uses one lag of the dependent variable. The D equals 1 tells you is a first different stationary series and the 2 here tells you that you have two lags of the error term in the model. So ARMA 101 by now should tell you what series you are working with or what model you are working with. So you have an ARMA 1 with a level stationary series and an MA1 process. So meaning that an ARIMA 101 equals ARIMA 11 simply because the series in question is a level stationary series. If a series is plotted, visual examination cannot indicate whether it follows number one, a purely AR process 
And if it does, what will be the value of P? Or that it is purely an MA process. If that is the case, what then is the value of Q? Or whether it's an Arima process? And if so, what are the values of P and Q? Or maybe it's an Arima process? In that case, we need to know the values of P, D, and Q. Also because the essence of engaging an Arima model is to forecast a series. Therefore, the BJ methodology comes in handy in answering this preceding question. The method consists of four simple steps. The first step would be for you to identify the model to be used. Second step is to estimate that model. The third step is to engage some diagnostic checking to be sure that the model is actually suitable. And the final step will be to forecast the series. I will adopt a hands-on approach to explain each of those steps in my subsequent videos. If you still need to read up, which I will advise you to, please read up on Asterio and Hall. I use most of the resources from Asterio and Hall, also from Gujarati and Potter, and from Woodridge. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so. Please don't go away. My next video will be to show you a practical way of identifying the appropriate model for ARIMA.